Okay, okay, who's ready for warp speed, huh? Who's ready? Whoa, whoa, look, it's John. That's right, ghosting Sean. Look, I can ghost at will. All it requires is clicking. Let me explain to you what's going to happen. We are way over. It's 8.22. 22. Normally, we try to end the show at 8.30. And we're starting part three, so let's... Ugh. Oh, God. Okay. We're going to go through this as fast as humanly possible to talk about the following thing. <sighs> MMA is going to be doing some great, cool, early moves against Bomber to get a nice edge that he closes out with later. Okay, it's an edge. It's not like a play. It's going to win him the game immediately. It's a play that's going to get him a big edge, and then he's going to win with that later, as most edges will function. Okay, pulling right back out. Let me show you the bill that MMA does. No, screw that. I'm going to show you it from Bomber's point of view first. There's no such thing as uh, the best time, period. The timing of an attack is not good because of what you're doing. The timing of an attack is good because of what your opponent is doing. It's dependent on your opponent. One of the most common builds in Terran vs. Terran... In fact, some players do it literally every game. Is gas, then barracks, then factory. It's one of the fastest ways to get up a starport. And I want you to note that with this build that gets you your Banshee up as fast as you... Actually, almost as fast as you can. As fast as you reasonably can. Look at when this is popping out. It's popping out at about six minutes. Now, th this... In this game, it's a little weird because Bomber didn't start the Banshee immediately. He started Cloak immediately. But generally, this Banshee is, like, right here at this point in time. And look at the drop that MMA is doing at the back at this point in time. This build shows up typically when the Banshee is here. And we will see that next game. Let's go ahead and look at Bomber. Oh, yes. Come here. Come here. Oh, my God. Sheriff, you're so close. Sheriff. Sheriff, come here. Get up. He's gonna... No. Oh, there's a kitty on my desk. Okay, let's look at the build. Let's talk like there's a kitty. Come here. Oh, oh no. All right, we lost the cat. It doesn't matter. All, all hope is lost. So we're going to see from MMA, still the refinery first. Still the barracks follow-up. If any other player were to scout this, he would likely go... Oh, this guy's you know, probably going for something Banshee-like. Look at the Marines getting produced out of the barracks. The Hellion gets produced immediately. The Mine gets produced as an immediate follow-up. The Medivac gets, uh, produces an immediate follow-up. The Hellion can then scout as well. Notice how the Hellion that moves forward can do good spotting for us, the Medivac. So, alright, we're going to see this. Just a nice play on the back. What's the only good way to deal with a Banshee? Well, it's with the Viking, so, you know, you got to get the Viking. But we skipped out on getting the Ravens, so now we got to get the Engineering Bay. And the remaining add-ons just go down because we always want a Tech Lab and a Reactor. But look at this cool timing. Look, look at how sexy this is. Here's the hard part. Whoop! That good old lift and land and stuff. Whoop! Whoop! Remember that Hellion? He's doing work. He's doing his job. Never stop, never give up, never surrender. How much has been killed off? Eh, just a little bit, just a smidge. Banshees do, uh, I'd perhaps I'd argue, a little more damage than they ordinarily should. A little bit of dropping. Oh. Oh. The net effect is that Bomber is reticent to move out. He's, in fact, reticent to even get scan going. Remember how I talked about that this barracks in the very first game of the first part? Bomber got his stim started early. Well, you can't really do that now, right? You, you're kind of feeling like you got to keep making Marines. And look at this other sweet move that MMA does. This other really sweet play. Oh, actually, I completely overlooked um, mentioning this initially. There's all this dropping going on here, and Bomber's doing the same sort of stuff he was doing before. Get those tanks started early. we got to keep making Marines. Use Banshees to apply pressure. This is followed up by a really weird three Viking timing. What? Why? Because the medevac sees what's going on in the base. 
And now, all these units can just be straight slain, man. So this opening has effectively just put MMA in the lead. Because this stim is like a million years later than Bomber would ever want it to be. With no stim, MMA just keeps pushing. I mean, it was first the Widow Mine move. It was then this Viking move. And now it's all these tanks that got started very early on, all moving in. I mean, even MMA's. MMA's very own stim is quite late. So if you're a bomber, you're not going to be going for any three command center stuff. So bomber just sort of commits to going for this big all any thing. And one thing that you'll note is that MMA is not even hugely, hugely ahead. The only difference between Bomber and MMA at the end of the day is this one base, which means that MMA will eventually have a huge lead. And so it's a pretty normal TVT after this, right? Like, I mean, God, I gotta turn this thing off, right? They both have five barracks. They both have one factory. They both have more or less the same amount of add-ons. These are almost done. It's just that MMA has this one little expansion. Pretty cool, right? Sweet little mind drop. We're going to see it be even sweeter next game. Bomber does the same stuff, trying to establish a pivot, except there's a little bit more pressure for Bomber because he can't actually do long-term plays, like do a doom drop in the main, because Bomber kind of has to just win right now. He actually has to target this. And then, uh, and then Bomber just eventually uh, peters out. Cool. Well, how are we doing on warp speed? Oh, we did that game in seven minutes. So easy. Sheriff, hello. Yes, yes, hello. Hello, come here. Come on, come on the desk. Come on up here. Come on, it's one desk and connects. Come here. Yeah, come here. Come here. Oh, oh, oh my god, my cat. Well, come here. Come here, yes, yes. Oh, oh, the kitty. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. We don't care about StarCraft right now. Oh, that's a cup. Yeah, that's your water now. Hey, hello. 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 It's a kitty. Oh, my God. This is what every cat that I've ever known does. Gets on my desk and just puts the butthole in right in front of my face. That's exactly what I want to see. Yeah, there's a shoelace back there. Oh, that's cool, isn't that? Oh, I have bright orange shoelaces. Alright, let's watch this thing. Yep, coming back. Kitty's coming back. Hello. Hello, kitty. Hello. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. The mouse is a toy, isn't it? Okay. So we're seeing Bomber uh, and MMA do the same thing. We're going to see the same little harassment type play as before. Notice both of them went gas, barracks, factory. <laughs> and then in the starport, notice here that we see that the Banshee gets made right away. Hey, hey kitty. <gasps> Are you going to visit me? Oh, oh, let's get the kitty cam. Right there, there's a kitty butthole, man. Does it does it even matter? Does it even matter what I'm gonna talk about? Come here, come here, kitty. Look at this. Look at this cord. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's an iPhone cable. Don't chew on that too much, cause I need that. Look at the kitty. Oh, you're not well lit enough. Your fur coat is too green. So you're gonna get faded out. Don't. That's a cord. My god, do you see this? This cat, this cat just, this cat just, like, came over and hung out with me. Oh, that was cute. Oh, that was cute. Okay, kitty. All right, I got, I'm going to finish my show now. Look out. Are you, do you want to go down there? What are you trying to do? Your body doesn't work that way. <laughs> oh, my god. What are you doing? 
doing? Well, you, the cat's purring. So the cat's purring, that's fine. The cat's purring, so we're gonna assume that the cat's body's bones actually have joints in all those directions. <laughs> Cat does not understand how its own body works. Has no clue. Alright, what, what are we talking about here? Okay, yeah. What was I talking about in the last game? That there's no such thing as the best time period. It's always best relative to what your opponent is doing. If your opponent does what most players do, and they rush for the Banshee as fast as possible, the Banshee tends to be a little ways out of the base when this Marine Mind Drop shows up. This is optimized versus the player that rushes for the Banshee, which means you can do this stuff. cat has no clue. So now we have this really cool kind of push where, again, we st we still see three Vikings coming out super fast from MMA. We still see the tanks coming up super fast from MMA. And we're very, very clearly seeing why. By getting three Vikings out so quickly, we almost always have air control. Bomber went for the Raven, which is not very good against Vikings. Not until much later in the game, in big Viking battles, where we can do things. <laughs> Sorry, the cat's just being absolutely, utterly stupid. Oh my god, you're the king of the mountain. Hey, sweet kitty. Hey, come here, what are you, what are you doing? God, I'm looking at a command center that's still right now. Well, that's what you're looking at. I'm looking at a cat. Okay, Jesus, 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 okay. So again, we see after this little series of moves, the drops, the Vikings, the tanks, MMA has a nice little lead. More stuff, more stable, all the things. We can do the sort of siege up array. I'm actually going to try to close this out really fast. I, my, my, I got a cat, okay? Those first two parts were excellent. You, I mean, especially part one of this show was fantastic. I have a cat, okay? I have a cat, and there's another cat. Alright. So this is the scary part. The most Terran players still tend to expand out here. And I will note something that Bomber does. That only Bomber does. Where Bomber, Bomber basically says, Oh, well dude, here's my pivot. I'll put my pivot here, and you'll try to attack me there. I mean, we're seeing MMA again set up the pivot point, and then hit on the left, and maybe hit on the right. Bomber's like, alright, I'll just go all the way around. This is one of the sickest moves I've ever seen. Bomber just marches his units across the map outside of MMA's natural, and he's actually going to force it to lift. Isn't that sick? That is so sick. The moves he performed that day, they were sick. Alright, Bomber. Bomba. All right, Mister Mister Bomber. Um, you know this is some kooky, nutty stuff, and oh god, okay, you know, okay, look, listen, I'm I'm gonna tell you what my cop out is. This game has a lot of interesting things to discuss here. I'm not gonna discuss them because we're late. We're late because we went too long in the first two games. We're late. We're just going to note that MMA did his nice little move that we saw in the last game to get up that early edge. And sort of how this manifests. The most general way in which early leads will manifest in Terran vs. Terran is this. Where one player will be stuck on two bases and you will have more than two. MMA is just doing these, like, really strong sweeps. We see the Marines spreading out. 
just going to set up as aggressive a pivot as he can. He's going to check for the third. Is there a third? No! Victory! And in these positions, what's really cool about these spots... ...is that by applying so much pressure, you generally always know exactly where your opponent's army is. This drop is fine. But man, Mr. Bomber... Mr. Mr. Bomber always finds a crazy move to do. Again, we're not really analyzing this, we're just kind of... We're just kind of shooting through because we don't have enough time. The game ending here was crazy. For any of you who haven't seen the series, just turn this off because this game was really, was really good and I'm not doing it as much justice because we're over on time. But my god. Bomber can take an unwinnable situation and find a way to win in it. And then he can take an unlosable situation, a guaranteed drawable situation, and find a way. To, uh, to throw it all away. Whoa, he's got more Marines. Oh, he's losing everything. G, 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 G. Let's take questions. Tomorrow I'm going to be playing a little, uh, Goblins versus Gnomes Arena. Howdy, Sheriff. How are you doing, Kitty? How are you? I just did the slow blink. I learned that from Jackson Galaxy. If the cab blinks back slowly, it means we're cool. Watch this. Sheriff. Hey. Sheriff. The cat won't look at me. Sheriff. 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 Cat is looking away from me and purring. What the fuck? You... I bought you. You are discounted. You normally cost 75, but you're 50 because you're a tabby. You will look at me. <laughs> Sheriff. Sheriff. Purring so loud. What the... Oh my god, I can't believe it. Ugh. <laughs> Warble says, are we doing questions or cats? No, we're not doing cats. Because I'm a 28-year-old man, I'm getting owned by something that has only been alive for two months. It wasn't even cells three months ago. You were just a name and you hadn't been picked out yet. Let's take some of these. Oh my god, this is... Oh my god, I love this question from Ivan for short. This has nothing to do with the show. And normally we just don't take those sort of questions, but I have to because it's too cute. Um, Ivan for short says, Day 9, can you do a more up-to-date stream guide? The last one is a bit older, and I'm wondering if there are any major changes since then. Yes. Just get XSplit, and it will do everything for you. XSplit, like, replaces, like, $30,000 worth of hardware with just, like, a cheap piece of software. And you don't need to know anything. You just download it, and you click and drag stuff, and it just works. I, I use XSplit. I love XSplit. Oh, my God. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see. Everyone's everyone's only talking about cats. <laughs> Cats, cats, cats. So Utorius is day nine. I know I'm a one game two, but at the 14 minute mark, wouldn't it have been better for MMA to go for the surround, aim for the third command center, and retreat? Maybe. Let's load it up. 
Let's load it up. Let's find it out. Let's find it out. All right. I don't even know what this question means! It's from Nerd Filmmaker. He says, Day 9, it annoys me when players super click at the beginning just to get APM up. Isn't this sorta of stacking the deck or cheating? What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can understand if it would annoy you. The motivation for any of you who don't know behind like doing a lot of this sorta of stuff at the start of the game is just to keep your hands sort of warm. If, have you ever, um, for any of you who did cross country, how um, people before a race will like, you know, jog a little bit and stretch and do those little jumping things to make sure your muscles are loose and good to go. And um, if you if you look at a graph of a player's APM where he starts low and then just tries to spike later in the game, he struggles more with the fast sections than if he had just um, been spamming and had his hands warm from the start. Uh, and is it stacking the deck? It is stacking the deck, but in a legal way. Cheating? Oh my god, nerd filmmaker, no. It's eliting. <laughs> uh, you might even refer to it as a skill hack. Zazing. Um, okay. So I'm being a dirtle head. This cat, come here. Come here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pet you. Hello. Yeah. All right. All right, so Utori's question was about the 14-minute mark. Oh, let us look at the 14-minute of marks. Bony Sora, I will answer your question post-stream. All right, we're trying to get to 14 minutes to ask Utori's question, because outside of cats and questions of cheating because players enjoy clicking, we want to try to look, we want to try to look at what is going on here. So wouldn't it have been better? Oh Jesus, I forgot the question. What was the question? Alright, let me find the question. This is... I just, I just can't maintain individual focus for this long, so I'm like drifting. <laughs> Uh, wouldn't it have been better for MMA to go for the surround, aim for the third command center, and retreat? Oh! Oh, MMA to go for the surround. Alright. At the 14 minute mark? We're at the 15 minute mark. Here, I'm going for this third. I don't... Oh, this aggressive push, this aggressive push seems inefficient. Um... Up to here, I'm sort of okay with it. Up to here, I'm sort of fine with everything. Here is where I'd probably begin leaning towards taking this. I kind of think that this barracks didn't need to be here. I think that these guys, and then having a little bit of extra money for this would have been good. This, this does seem inefficient to me. Like, this is one of those things where, you know, it's like, you feel sexy and nice, but I think it's one of the highest lose percentage things. Yeah, I mean, I think that once you deny this, if you do a small drop here, it has the exact same effect as a big drop. And if you go back around this way, you still have that vulnerability. So, I think you're a smart guy, Utori. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to be casting IEM San Jose on Saturday and Sunday. I need to remember to get my dry cleaning tomorrow. I'm setting an alarm. Label. Dry cleaning. I'm going to stream Hearthstone tomorrow. Kitties! Kitties, kitties, kitties! Hearthstone tomorrow, come to IEM San Jose. Hip, hip, Jose! 
All right, let's listen to some music. Guys, do you know the name of the song? Do you know? Check